Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to another episode exploring the Cornerstone External API. My name is Josh Donnelly and in today's video, we are going to piggyback off of something that we did in one of our previous videos, which was creating a general stock analysis page that had a top 10 gainers, top 10 losers, and current stock trending news. And in today's video, we are going to take that a step further and leverage that external data to populate Cornerstone charts on individual stock ticker pages. Now we're gonna have a lot of fun here and I'm gonna move quickly, but we're gonna cover this from start to finish. And that means we're gonna do things like creating a custom post type, adding custom meta fields to our custom post type, setting up our allow list for our external API because we're gonna use a different one than the one we used in our previous video, configuring our global API, and then configuring individual looper providers based off of that global API. I know that sounds like a mouthful, but without further ado, let's dive in. First things first, we've already selected a new API API that we want to pull historical data from, and that's this market stack here. We've set up an account with them and we've received an API key, which we're going to get to later. But what we do know based on all of this setup is that we want to allow list our standard API domain right here. So we're going to go ahead and copy that, jump into the back end of WordPress here and under cornerstone settings, we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. If you haven't already done this, you need to have the external API enabled and then we'll click on configure. We're going to scroll all the way down to our allow list where you'll see the financial modeling prep API that we set up in the previous video. We'll go ahead and add a new line and we'll add in our market stack domain here and we will save and now with that done we can begin setting up our custom post type now we know that we want to have an individual post for each of the stocks that this site is listing so we're going to go to acf and click on post types we're going to add a new post type and we'll call this post type stocks we'll give it a singular label of stock and a post type key i'm going to make this plural so it'll be stocks and then we'll scroll down to our advanced configuration and enable this. And this is just a personal preference, but I'm going to disable the Gutenberg editor. And for the sake of keeping things simple for this video, we'll go ahead and disable the featured image as well. Under URLs, we're going to scroll down and make sure that this has the archive enabled because that's how people would discover the various stocks that our site is listing. Now, we may not get into the archive in this video here, but I wanted to make sure that we covered how to enable the archive. With that done, we can go ahead and save. And immediately on the left-hand side, you'll notice that we now have stocks, but we need to add a field group to this. So we're going to jump over to field groups here and we're going to click add new. And we're going to go ahead and just for the sake of simplicity, name this one stocks as well. So we know what it is assigned to. And obviously you could add any number of custom fields in here that you so desire. But all I need for the sake of this example is one for our ticker symbol and we'll go ahead and leave our field name exactly as that default ticker underscore symbol that's looking pretty good we'll scroll down to the bottom and make sure that it is assigned to our post type is equal to stock and save now with that done we can begin adding in our individual stocks. so let's click on stocks let's click add new and immediately you'll see we have our title field and our field group ticker symbol here so let's go ahead and add in apple and the ticker symbol is AAPL and publish. And let's add two more. That way we have three of these in here. We'll add in Microsoft and their ticker symbol is MSFT. And then we'll add in Google, which is alphabet and their ticker symbol is GOOG and click publish. All right, and so with those three companies added, if I click on all stocks here, you'll notice we now have Alphabet, Microsoft, and Apple entered in here, so we should be in good shape. So let's go ahead and launch Cornerstone. And within Cornerstone here, we're gonna go ahead and click on the plus sign, and we want a single layout here. We're gonna name this layout individual stocks page. And then under settings, we're gonna go ahead and make sure that we have this properly assigned. So we're gonna say under assignment, conditions, add condition group, post type is, and we want stock. Now we also wanna make sure that we are previewing one of our stocks because we're gonna start using some dynamic content. So we're gonna jump up to the preview pane here and make sure that our preview URL is set to stock and then it'll pre-select one of them. You can always switch it as you see fit, but we'll go ahead and leave it on Apple. So with all of that done, let's begin focusing on setting up our global API. So let's jump over to our globals here and scroll all the way down to the bottom. You'll see our old FMP API from the previous video right here. We're going to keep that, but we want to now add a second global endpoint. And this global endpoint, we are going to name market stack API. 
and we need to give it an endpoint value. So let's jump over to the documentation and we can see here that the endpoint value, we're gonna just choose it through the V1 here. So, uh, and we are on the free version, so it's actually HTTP instead of HTTPS. So we'll grab that here and we'll add that endpoint in. Now we're gonna be pulling through end of day stock prices, which is specified as EOD. So we could add that to our endpoint here, or we could add that to our global path here. But for the sake of this example, just so you guys can see how things are coming together, we're going to save that and add it to the individual looper providers when we get there. Jumping back over to our documentation, we can see that to validate our request, we need this access key parameter and then our API key. So we're going to jump back over here under request attributes. We're going to add an attribute. This is going to be access key with a value of let's go over here, grab our API key and add that value in here. Now, the final thing we need to do here in our global is set our cache, and I'm just gonna set this to an hour here. So we'll go ahead and set that and save. Now, if I were actually doing this for a real build here, I'd probably add in more parameters directly here to the global so that this is more reusable and I don't have to type in things every time, but I kind of want you guys to see how it all comes together. So we're going to go ahead and leave this just like this. So now on our page, let's go ahead and click start from scratch and we're going to add in our API tester element here and we'll configure this. So on the outermost container, we'll click API tester customize and we're going to change this from external api to external api global this is going to allow us to tap into that market stack api that we just set up and you'll notice it is erroring out so why is it erroring out well two things one we haven't specified a path and we know from this documentation here that the path we want to access is eod for end of day data so we're going to go ahead and grab that jump over here and add that to our path, but it's still failing out. And the reason is because any request with this API also requires the stock ticker symbol. So we're going to come into request here, click attributes, click the plus sign, and under name, we're gonna type symbols, and under value, we're gonna type AAPL. Now that's a fixed value, but we're testing it to make sure this all works. And right away, you'll notice our API tester is pulling through data. And we can actually see that Apple pricing data being pulled through right here. So this is a great start. Let's begin actually designing out our page now based on this. So we're gonna jump over here. We'll add another section below this. And let's go ahead and just add a column here. And in that column, let's add a line chart and we'll go ahead and drag that line chart out here. And right away that line chart is pulling through just some random default data, but we're gonna go ahead and fix that by piping in our API data. So first things first, we're gonna open our label set and get rid of all but one label. And we're gonna open up our data set and do the same. Now, because we wanna have two consumers, we wanna have the labels consuming and the data consuming, we don't wanna add our looper provider to the chart as a whole under customize here. We actually wanna add two looper providers. So you can see why being more specific in your global would make it more reusable, but follow along. So under our label set here, let's inspect the label set, click customize, and we're gonna set up our first looper provider here to our external API. Now we're gonna set this up very similar to how we did the API tester above. We're going to select market stack API. Under our path, we're gonna specify end of day, EOD. Under our request, we're gonna request attributes and we're going to add in symbols and a value. But instead of specifying a value like AAPL, we want this to be dynamic based on whatever stock page we are on. So we're gonna click our dynamic content here and we're going to type in ACF scroll down to our ACF post field, and we're gonna enter in our field key of ticker underscore symbol. As you'll recall, we created that in the ACF field group here as ticker underscore symbol. So that's where we're getting that from. We'll go ahead and click plus. Now, nothing's happening just yet because we haven't set up a consumer, but there is another thing that we want to add in here. We wanna make sure that this is set in ascending order with the oldest date being on the left-hand side and the newest date being on the right-hand side, just because I think that makes the most sense. So if we go into the API documentation here and we scroll down a little bit further, you'll notice that one of the parameters that we can pass through is sort, and by default, it is descending. We want it to be ascending. So let's jump back into Cornerstone. We're gonna add another attribute. This one will be sort and the value will be ascending. And finally, in this documentation, you'll notice that we have a date from. This is like a start date for pulling through our data. So we're gonna go ahead and grab that, jump back over here, add another attribute, make this date from. And the problem here is that we want this to be a rolling 30 days. So we could specify something roughly 30 days ago, let's say 2023, 
dash October, so 10, and October 1st, something like this. And the problem is that is static. We want that to be dynamic, but we're going to get back to that in just a moment. And now the final thing we need to do, let's go ahead and scroll back up to our API tester here for a moment to access that pricing data. It's actually housed within the data key of data. And we know that because it's listed out right here. So in our chart, we also want to specify a data key of data. And now if I jump back over to general and I go into our very first label here and I jump into customize and I set this up as a consumer, you'll notice that it is now consuming something. So now let's actually give it some sort of real label here. So we'll open up our dynamic content. We'll type in looper field key. And the key that we want to access here is date. So we'll type in D A T E and click plus. And if we scroll back down, you'll notice that it is pulling through the dates. We can actually even specify that this is a date in our dynamic content by typing type equals quote date end quote and now it'll format the date in sort of a nicer fashion and things are looking pretty good now the problem is like i mentioned our looper provider here is pulling through a fixed value so in a year it's still going to be pulling through october 1st 2023 that's not really a rolling 30 days so we want this to be dynamic in some way shape or form and if we come over here you'll notice that cornerstone actually has a built-in dynamic content api now don't get this confused with the global external api this is completely separate for setting up custom dynamic content on your cornerstone sites now we're not going to get into all of the nuances of what we're setting up here and how this works but know that this is possible to tap into this dynamic content so i already have this ready to go so we're going to go ahead and just copy our code here jump into the back end of the site go into appearance theme file editor in our child theme we're going to go to functions.php and we're going to go ahead and paste this in and you'll notice what this is doing is registering a field for date minus 30 days giving it a label creating the dynamic content creating the calculation making sure that our calculation is in iso 8601 and the reason we're doing that is because under the api documentation it specifies that the date format has to be in ISO 8601. So let's go ahead and save our custom dynamic content here. Let's jump back into our cornerstone builder and we are going to refresh. That way it recognizes this new piece of dynamic content we've added in here. Let's scroll back down, click on our label set, click on customize and under the date from now, let's go ahead and delete our fixed value, open up our dynamic content and immediately you'll notice we now have a new piece of dynamic content called date minus 30 days. Let's go ahead and add that in. And now on the right-hand side, you'll notice that we have dates that are based on a rolling 30 day period. And obviously these are based on trading days. So the days might not line up exactly, but it is based on a rolling 30. So now this is looking pretty great. Now we want to do this exact same thing for our data set. So you can see again where the globals would come in handy, but we're just going to repeat this over there. So let's go ahead and jump up a level, jump into our data set, turn on our looper provider, external API, set that to our market stack API, make the path EOD for end of day. And then we can add in our attributes. Attribute one was symbols, and that was an ACF field. And that field was ticker underscore symbol. And then our second attribute was sort, and we want that to sort in ascending order, ASC. And then our third attribute was date from, and we want this to pull from our new custom dynamic content of date minus 30 days. And then we want to specify that data key of data. So D-A-T-A, -A. and now we should be in pretty good shape. So let's jump back over to our general data set here and inspect our first piece of data. In here, let's go ahead and instead of a random integer, let's go ahead and add in a looper field. And that field key that we want is going to be the close price each day. And so I think we can get that by typing in close. Yep, here it is here. So we'll type in C-L-O-S-E and click plus. Now, instead of a random color, let's just give this kind of a green here. Maybe it's kind of faded out a little bit, something like this here. And then let's give it a border color and that can be full color. And the reason it's not working is because we don't yet have it consuming. So now let's jump into customize on this single data point and click consume and immediately we're seeing our data visualized here now a couple things i would want to do is jump into our data set and make sure that this is set to price so this is showing the data in prices uh, we want our circles here to maybe have a little more of a matching color so something like this and then maybe a darker border 
Uh, I'd want those to be a little bit bigger. So maybe let's go four and then they have a hover radius of eight. So they kind of grow a little when they're hovered on there. That's looking pretty good. And then I kind of want this to look a little more modern. So maybe we add a border radius of one and a tension of 0.5, and that'll just kind of round out our edges a little bit there. Now, obviously we could style this however we wanted, but I think this is a good start. Now let's add in a title and we're just going to drag this right out here for the sake of example, and we'll get rid of our API tester. Let's go ahead and save this here and jump out to the front end. And here we have our Apple chart. When we hover on this, you can see that on October 10th, the price was 178. On October 11th, it was 179, 180, 178. So we can see how Apple has been performing over time. If we then jump into our other stock here, which was Microsoft, and we go to that page, it immediately populates that one with data based off of the ticker symbol field as well. And we have October 10th, 328. 332, 331, etc. Now let's go and type in Google or Alphabet. And now we're seeing Alphabet's data here populated all from that external API. And there you have it. All of this data is being populated to our page from that external API dynamically. As always, I hope you guys find these videos useful. The sky is truly the limit when it comes to these external APIs and what is possible. We look forward to seeing your projects in the future and happy building.